Well, welcome to church. This is third Sunday of 2018. This is my first message in 2018. I'm excited to be sharing with you. And so far, we started with this series, Start Strong. And I'm so excited that we're starting with this series because we can all use some strength in 2018, can we? Whatever area in your life you need strength in, God has a provision. So it does, doesn't matter what area of your life, don't think that you're the weakest or don't think that your situation is different than anybody else's because God is interested in you. Not the way you can be, but in you today so he can help you to be where you want to be by the grace of God in your life in this year. So I'm, I'm excited to start a series. I just want to welcome all of you watching online. It's such a great opportunity for you to watch and we just love you. Whatever you're going through, we just pray God's grace over your life. And I enjoyed that myself a couple of weeks ago when we were on vacation. It was so nice to tune in and listen and to follow along. It was just a great blessing. So thank you, everyone who's doing it and making it possible. And today I will go um, and share with you into a message called Start Strong in the Word. There is no way for us to overestimate the significance of the Word of God in our lives. It's really a foundational principle. It's foundation for everything we believe in. And we know whatever we do in our lives, it rooted in our belief in something, right? If we put our trust and our, and our faith in Jesus and His Word, then the product of our life would be great. So whatever we're doing, and of course, this is coming off of a week of fasting and prayer. What a wonderful week we had every morning here at 6.30. We were just seeking God. There was time of worship, a short message, and then time of personal prayer, a core prayer. prayer. It's just exciting time for refreshments, a reset, so to, so to say. So when you can reset your focus, when you say, God, I'm full on. I want to start this year seeking you, waiting on, on the Lord, and just saying, God, lead me. It was a great, great time. But how many of you know, unless you pray in the Word of God for your life, unless you're going back to the Word of God of, of, in your life, sometimes we lose focus. What am I going to pray for? What am I going to do in this year? So starting with the Word of God, that's where I, all of us want to go. And as we know... Here at Connect Church, we encourage people to think of our, of our walk with Christ as a journey. Not as a moment, not as an event, but as a journey. And no wonder we're different because we're in different places of our journey. That doesn't make one person better or one person not as good. It just, just means that we're in different places of our journey. And that also means that we are spiritual beings. We just trapped or right now we're in physical body. So we need spiritual guide for our lives. We need someone else from outside guiding us. And I like how, how C.S. Lewis put it in Mere Christianity. By the way, great book. I have it. You can get one of those. This is great perspective on life. He says, aim at heaven and you'll get earth thrown in. Aim at earth. And you'll get neither. When you, when you understand you are a spiritual being, so your focus should not be this earth. Even though we're here now, but we, our journey leads us to heaven. This is where our final destination is. So our focus, our perspective comes from thinking I'm a spiritual being. So I need the spiritual guidance for my life. And that's the word of God. The word of God is eternal. It's been tested and it's been proven to be true. The Word of God actually starts way before anything was there. Did you know that God created this world by the power of His Word? That's how powerful His Word is. And that's the reason our messages are short. Our services are short. Unless you've been in services where there are 30 minutes, I haven't. I think our service is pretty short, about hour plus. You know why? Because the Word of God has power and authority, and I don't have to say everything to you. Because the Word of God has power to work in your life way beyond this, this service and this message. And address your current situation, even if I don't mention it. But just being in the presence of God and opening your heart will make the work in you, will do the work in you. So here is, here is what the Bible says about the Word of God. In the beginning, 
whatever you want to know the truth, go to the beginning. Any area of your life, anything culture offers, anything you're doubting and you're trying to figure out, go to the beginning, see how it was in the beginning. What was the original intent of God for a certain situation in your life? Here's what Bible says, John 1, 1, 2. In the beginning was the Word, the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Look how it changes. He was in the beginning with God. Now, this is the same word that created everything we see. It's Jesus Christ himself. And then John continues writing. He says, and the word became flesh. Now, we know he's speaking about Jesus. Jesus created the world. And then he came into the same world he created. And he dwelt among us. He lived with people. You know, Jesus probably the coolest God anyone can have. Everyone else in different religions, they just dream of this kind of God that you just can hang out with and you can talk to. The Word became flesh and He lived with people. And we have seen His glory, glory as of only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. God came to His creation. The Word of God came to His creation. So here is the... Here is the Conclusion we can make out of this. You want to know Jesus? You, know, you want to know the God? Bible is God. You want to know God? Get to know your Bible. You want to know the Word? Get to know the written Word and you will know the person behind the Word. You want to know Jesus? Figure out about Jesus from His Word because He stands behind. Whenever you open the book, you listen, you're hearing Him speak to your life. You want to know Jesus? Get to know His Word. You want to know Him more in 2018? Decide to hear from Him more. Decide to open your heart. Decide to open your ears and say, God, speak into my life. I want to know. The Word of God has power. Now you would say, what about difficult places in the Bible? What about those things that I just can't understand? So what did Jesus think about those places in the Bible? When Jesus came and he was preaching, you would say if there was any shadow of a doubt, of doubt in Jesus' mind, he would probably say, hey, guys, let me correct this thing that you heard, but let me tell you what it really is. Jesus quoted the Old Testament 78 times from 27 different books of the Old Testament. He confirms the scriptures are true. What do disciples do? They quote scriptures 209 times in their writings. And this is what we know about. That's what written in the scripture for us. That's what we know about. So what Jesus does, he says, read the Bible. Because when he showed up to preach for the first time, he opens the book and he reads Isaiah. That's how important, that's how true the Bible is. That's why the Bible is still most attacked, most hated book in the world. In many parts of the world, it's still a forbidden book. You can't have it. You can't read it. That's the reason is it's not just information. It brings life. It brings hope. There is a person behind the book and his name is Jesus. That's why there is so much hostility against the Bible. But we have it. We have it in so many forms and ways that there is no excuse for us to say, I, I don't have, I don't have way to read my Bible. I don't have time. If you want to know Jesus, get to know his word. Get to know his word. Here's what Jesus said about the word of God. He said, the spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. And of course, we know Jesus said those words when he was speaking to a woman of Samaria. She came just, she just casually came to, to, to get some water and she met with Jesus. You know, I, I can't think but help, but I can't help but think that sometime in our day, doing casual things, doing usual things, we can encounter Jesus. Sometime there is a moment when somebody needs us. It's Jesus. Jesus says, when you help other people, you're really helping me. When you see a need, you're serving me. 
Jesus asked this woman, would you give me a drink? But when you start serving other people, you don't know what you're going to receive from God. When you start serving. But this is another message. So Jesus says, the spirit gives life. This this words, he says, the words I give you. Did you know that in Greek language, this word means pneuma. And that's where we get our English word uh, pneumatic, pneuma, pneuma, pneumatic tools. Those of you who are in construction, you know, this is, this means air, air. Did you know that God created this world by the power of his words? This is the same word Jesus uses. He says, when I speak the word, it has power. We know the air is just air. We, nothing can survive with, without air. But when air is packed and you shoot it through the hose, it can break concrete. It can cut metal. It can drive nails in. When the words in the mouth of Jesus, they bring power. They bring life. It's not just written words. They can change your situation. Whatever you're going through, Jesus says, my words are full of spirit and life. Don't treat it lightly. When you hear him speak, open your heart, open your mind and say, God, speak to me. I want to receive your word. And then we read in Hebrews 2, chapter 2, it says, chapter 4, it says, the word of God is living and active. Don't forget it. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Well, that's a little bit too, too descriptive. Uh, this is, talks about surgery, talks about inner parts of a body, and this is a little scary, right? We don't want to see that. Let's just say, unless you're a medical professional, you don't, see what's, you don't want to see what's on the inside, but in other ways, the Bible says, when the word of God comes into your life, it penetrates your life. Because it's living and active. If you allow it to get on inside of you, it's not just information. It starts to put things in perspective. It starts to bring order in your life. It goes to your spirit, your feelings, your mind. Every area of your life is affected. Because it's living and active we have the word of God but you would say I know the word of God maybe I even memorized the word of God but it's not active in my life what is missing why is it not working in my life and by the way when we talk about the word of God we're talking every area if the word of God is only living and active in the church when we serve it's one part it's good but really, the word of God, as we read, has to be in your marriage, in your finances, the way you treat others, the way you do in school, every area, the way you do business, every area of your life. So what is missing? Let me give you some points. Faith activates the word. Faith activates. If you are a fan of chemistry or you even do some experiments, those of you here who even color hair for, for a living, you know that you need to combine some things to receive the desired color or see activation. If you're using something in, in construction, you, wanna, you want something to harden. You need to put some things together and then reaction happens. If you just know the word of God, but it's not received with faith, as Jesus said, it's not going to produce any result in your life. It's just there, but it's, it's not going to work in your life. It's very important. Here is what Paul writes, or the, the, the author of Hebrews writes. He says, for we also have had the good news proclaimed to us. He writes that before they received Christ, before they received Christ, just as they did. But the message they heard was at, of no value to them. Listen to this. The message is good. The message is not the problem. And here is his, his, his why. Because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. In other translation, it literally says, because it was not dissolved by faith. It just stayed in solid form. It was not mixed up and received by faith. It was not received well. That's why it remained without any action, meaning no value. The word of God is not the problem. 
But if you don't receive and don't dissolve it by faith, it will not give you anything. As a matter of fact, it has a negative effect on your life because you know Word of God. And you live under, under weight of condemnation and you start to think, I'm a bad person. I can't follow up. Well, this Sunday is not about feeling guilty. It's about trying to figure out what can I do to have the Word of God, the mighty, the powerful work of, Word of God work in my life. What do I do? What are the steps? Let me give you some steps. Revelation activate, activates faith. What is revelation, you would ask? I don't know what it is. Well, revelation in, in simple words, that's aha moment. Like you read something. You, you want to know something, and then all of a sudden, wow, that's what it means. Revelation activates faith. That's what we pray about when we pray for weekend services. We pray that when people come, when we all come, it's not only information we receive, but we receive revelation. We receive information that goes beyond mental reception of information, but it goes into our heart. That's the word of God is. It goes down deep. It goes inside and it starts working. Revelation activates faith. Did you know that word, word has two meanings in the, in the New Testament? First one is Logos. That's written word. And by the way, that's the name of first band I was part of. When I was 16, it was Logos. You know, I've been a Christian. By the way, we didn't mean it to call Logos. I'll talk about that later. But that was the band. We wouldn't reach people for Christ. So we were saying, singing. And that's the word people know even in the, this world. They can, they can quote. A lot of people know famous uh, scriptures in the Bible. Logos. When you just have that part of the, of the word of God, this is letter of the law. This is where the difference felt. Well, I know, but I'm not there. So what do I do? There is second meaning of the word, and it's rhema. Actually, we meant to call, to, to name our band rhema, but we kind of got those two mixed up unless one of the preachers started telling us more. But we tried. Rhema, it's revealed word of God. It's actually when you know, but now you know how to apply. All of a sudden, it makes sense to you. This is what it means. The word is activated by revelation. This is what makes serving God exciting. When you have burden of the law, when you think, I have to do this. But all of a sudden, it becomes personal because you hear from the author of the word. You are now talking to him and it comes from him. You've met the author of the word. And now all of a sudden, it's not a burden. It's relationship. You're doing it for him, not just to, just to feel the pressure. For me, those moments often happens when I run. Uh, revelation and I and I talk to some of my friends and they try run and they just, they just feel tired and I I don't guarantee you that every time you run you receive revelation but for me it happens quite often when I run and I'm listening to scripture of course I'm not listening to rap music or anything I'm listening to the Word of God so you got to have the right combination I'm not saying rap is bad I'm just saying this is what I prefer I'm listening, I'm to the podcast or whatever I'm listening. And I'm not making this up. I was running in the city because we don't have uh, sidewalks where I live. I'm running and cars, of course, and everything. And all of a sudden, I have to stop. Antenna is up. I'm, I'm praising God and I'm receiving. I got my phone out. I'm just writing things. I don't care what's going on. The revelation comes. That's why when I praise God, when I, when I pray, I have my pen and paper. Because God speaks when you seek him. How many of you know he speaks? He's alive. And when you allow him to speak in your spirit, that's when serving him becomes exciting. That's not burden anymore. You say, God, I want to serve you because I heard from you. I know who you are. I know you, you want me to do this, not because you're trying to restrict me, but because you're trying to propel me forward. And sometimes saying no to you will propel you faster than anything. God speaks Seek revelation from God. You would say, well, it doesn't happen to me. So how do I get revelation? Let me tell you. Meditation activates revelation. You can, you can blame God. You can blame people. You can blame your kids for being loud. Meditate. Are you meditating on the word of God? 
Are you meditating on the word of God? If you have a dream, how do you know it's a dream? Because you constantly think about it. How you know it's a dream when you wake up and you go to bed with it? If you love somebody, have you noticed those people? Have you been one when you just fell in love? That's all you thought about, right? You thought about that girl or that boy. They were on your mind. You didn't have to make yourself to think about them. You had to make yourself to do something else and actually be focused. Meditation, the word of God. Here's what God says about that. Keep this book. God speaking to a young person, relatively young. He's, he's right, right in the middle of making history. What he does would depends what goes into the Bible. Do you understand how important that was? Here's what God tells him. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Sometimes we're so afraid to come off as religious that we just, I'm not going to use it. There's nothing wrong with speaking the word of God. There is nothing wrong with having it on your lips. Then he says, meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Now, why do you need to meditate? To, to know and show off your knowledge? To do, actually. So you can be careful and to do everything that's written in it. And then what happens? Then you will be prosperous and successful. This is where we want to be. Everyone wants to be here, but do we want to pay the price? Do we want to dwell on it? Do we want to commit ourselves to meditating on God? And I'm not a farmer, and in first service, very few people got it. I'm sure more of you farmers here. There is a word, ruminate. And that, that's not being a roommate. No, no. Ruminate, that's mean to chew the cud. You know, like animals, ruminating animals. Those of you from school, did you go to school? That's those animals that chew. What happens? Cattle, sheep, uh, all, uh, some, maybe like hundreds, some animals, they chew. What happens? When they, when they graze, right, then they bring it back up. They, they swallowed the originally, and then they, they bring it back up. That's not a pretty thing. And they start... They start chewing it again up to four times because their stomach has four chambers. It goes from one to another, and one of the, sta uh, uh, one of the chambers called rumen, that's why the name, I'm just giving you a lesson. So they ruminate means they're bringing back up. This is what word meditate means. It means to ponder, to meditate, reflect, contemplate, keep replaying in your, in your mind and speak it out loud. If you have a dream, people will hear about it. I know some of your dreams because you constantly talk to me about them. And I'm excited for you when you have a dream. If the word of God moves you, people will hear about it. Somehow it will, it will leak. The excitement will leak that you are excited about God. It will show up somewhere because you are driven by it. You have dream. What did Jesus say? Here's what Jesus said about that. He said, these words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life. By the way, this is message. I don't suggest you have messages main version you read. But to have, this is rephrased gospel. But it's good to have just to read it. Homeowners improvements to your standard of living. It's not an addition to. Like you got everything but you just need the word of God. Jesus said they are foundational words to build a life on. If you work these words into your life, you are like a smart carpenter who built his house on solid rock. Who doesn't want to be smart? And who doesn't want to have a solid house? Jesus said, my words, they're like building material. They're like foundational structure. You put it on because here's what's going to happen. Rain poured down. The river flooded. A tornado hit. But nothing moved that house. It was fixed on the rock. A tornado, I have it highlighted. You know why? When I just moved here. First time we experienced like a st storm. It wasn't even a tornado, but you don't know what to expect. Like we see warning. I did not know difference. Warning and watch. Watch, warning. When do you hide? What do you do? So we were very scared. So I have it highlighted. Now we're not scared anymore. But you got to be careful. Don't relax too much when they're coming. 
There is no guarantee this won't hit. As a matter of fact, every one of us will experience this at some point of our lives. You can't escape it. Jesus saying, you cannot stop the storm, but you can build strong. You cannot prevent the storm, but you can build strong. Work in the word of God into every area of your life. Proof your marriage with the word of God. Proof your finances, your relationship, your priorities, your choices, your time management. Built in the word of God in your life. Built in, built on it. Then whatever hits, you're going to be strong. So what are the some practical steps? How do you get there? Let me give you some. Number one, you must accept its authority. I must accept its authority. We must accept its authority. How many of you know any authority can be undermined? And the problem is not with authority or its validity or person behind it. It's how we receive it. How we receive, especially in the free world, we like to say, says who, that I have to do this. It's a choice we have to make. Do I accept God's authority? Do I, do I accept it in my life? Accept meaning receive it. Do I just know the word of God is true, but, but not for me. I, I know better. I can make my own choices. I must accept, accept its authority if I want to see God's word in my life. We can question science. We can question medicine. But if we keep questioning the word of God, it will not work for us. It's like if you won't take the medicine, you won't see the results. If you don't take the word of God, accept it, you won't see the results in your life. Here's what Paul says to one of the churches because he preached to many people. But these people stood out. Here's what he says. And we also thank God constantly for this. That when you received the word of God which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as what it really is, the word of God, which is at work in you believers. Paul says, when you heard the word of God, you decided to receive and to accept it for what it truly is, the word of God. Not as merely human words. You received it as the word of God. That's why it works in you. Do you want the word of God to work in you? Accept it. And this word accepted in Latin, it means to welcome a stranger. If someone was walking on the street and you opened your house, you said, come on in, I'll feed you. Be, be my guest. My house is open for you. This is what it means. And not just to wave hello, but to bring in, to make him your family. That's what they did. They accepted. That's why it works in their lives. God stands behind his word. When you accept his word, you're accepting God. And when he comes, then his words become active. Then the word in his mouth becomes strong. It removes stronghold in your mind, brings freedom to you. When you open your life to him, then it starts working in your life. I must incorporate its truth. I accept it. I want it. I must incorporate. How many of you ever try to make, make a recipe? You know you need to incorporate ingredients. You need to bring them together and then reaction happens. I believe that our lives, some area of our lives, they're not on its own have good taste. But when we bring the word of God into every area of our lives, that's when the mixture happens. That's when reaction happens. That's why the results of our life start to be good. Even if you think that you are bringing your past, your history, whatever it is, it's not good for you. Bring the word of God, bring the truth, incorporate the truth into that area of your life. And you will start seeing better results. Because the word of God will bring the difference in you. How do you incorporate? Number one. By listening to the word of God. Do you realize that up until a couple hundred years ago, this was the only way people could get the word of God. They didn't know how to read even if they had a book. They didn't know how to read. So they listen and then they would talk about it. That's why meditation comes in. So listen to the word of God. By the way, coming to church is important. Exposing your heart and your mind to the presence of God and listening to the word of God humbly is of great value to everyone. 
Make choice to be in the presence of God. Don't miss Sundays. And I'm not saying because I'm a pastor. This is how I grew up. There were, if there was church, we were there. Before I was a pastor, before I was committed, any church I was a part of, I was committed to the fullest. This is how you set yourself, yourself for success in life. You are committed to the Word of God. If you as a parent come to church once a month, guess what? Your kids, when they grow up, they won't go to church. It's a sad reality. If they don't see it's a priority for you, what makes you think they would think it's a good thing for them if it wasn't good enough for you? You showed up whenever there was nothing else to do. You're just bored. So let's go to church. Make it a priority to the listen to the word of God. Because that's what brings life to you. Listen to the word of God. Because the Bible says, faith comes from hearing and hearing comes from the word of Christ. Read the word of God by reading God's word. There is something good when you flip the page. I still like my Bible reading when I flip the pages. I have one Bible here. That's my main study Bible. I have several Bibles at home. I have my first English Bible. I keep it. I have my Russian Bible. I keep them all and I see, I go back and I see all the notes I ever made. And it's it just very, very impactful to go back and see what did God speak to me then? What was important to me? Read the Word of God and then you can combine. You can listen in your headset and then you can read along. There is so much power. There is so many ways we can read the Bible. There is no excuse not to read the Bible. Get your own Bible. Do you have a Bible you can call your own? Here's what Jesus said about written word. He said, it is written, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus compared reading the Bible to eating food. He said, this is how important it is. Do you think eating is important? When you read the Bible, this is what feeds your spirit. That's what gives you strength. That's what gives you life. When we treat the Word of God as food for our spirit, then our spirit would grow and flourish and get strong because we give it a priority. Here is what I'm going to ask you to do. Pick a time of day when you read the Bible. Don't leave it up to chance. I'm not saying be legalistic about it, but plan your day and include Bible reading in your day. Plan your day, include it in your day. And then here is the challenge I want to do for myself and for every one of you here. Let's read through the Bible together in 2018. Let's pick a plan you like. It doesn't have to be one plan, but stick to a reading plan. If we start today, we're going to be done by Next Direction Sunday. Wouldn't that be great for us? As we move on, we're moving with the Word of God. We're reading for them. So I'm starting my plan today. This is why I didn't start. I, want, I waited for this so we can do it together. And then if you skip the day, don't sweat it. You don't have to catch up. Just keep on reading next day. Because if you have 150 chapters, you skip, you, you're just going to be overwhelmed. If you skip a day, just go right back into it. Keep reading. But bring Bible reading into your every day activity and lastly here's very important don't just read the bible let the bible read you don't just read the bible so you know it, but open up yourself to bible when god speaks to you listen receive and let god speak to you and last point how do we make the word of god work in us i must apply its principle i must apply those of you who have a bunch of tools in your garage, like a lot of us do. You have paint of every color in storage, but your bathroom ain't looking any better. <laughs> because you're not applying what you have. You have all the tools, you have all the supplies. It could be applied to any area of your life. Having something, knowing that it's good, doesn't make your bathroom walls look better. It's actually getting it out of, out of a can and applying it on walls makes the difference. When you accept the Word of God and you accept its authority and then you apply it to your life, then the outcome looks better. Then your life looks better. I must accept, apply its principles. Remember we read in Joshua 
so you will be careful to do everything written in there, and then you will be prosperous and successful. I can't help but think that many of us like to watch those quick Food Network videos, right? The, the recipe, recipe preparation. You can watch them all day long. They get hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. But what if all you did just went to the kitchen and made yourself something which you're actually watching? Now you're fed, you're happy, and you stop watching them. When you don't apply the Word of God, you know it's good and it sounds right, but applying, that's what brings different, that's what feeds you. Here's what James says about that. He says, do not merely listen to the Word of God and so deceive yourself. There is power of deception thinking that I already know. Well, I know, I know that. I already know that. Do what it says. Do what it says. Let's be very careful as believers not to settle for knowing the scripture, but doing what it says. Applying to every area of our life, bringing into our, our lives, opening ourselves up to the word of God to allow the size and to the device and just bring attention to every area that needs attention and allow the word of God to grow us, to lift us up where God wants us to be. Do what it says. Wherever you are today, whether you need to stop from very beginning, maybe you don't know the author of the scripture. Maybe you know about him. Maybe you, you believe the word of God is good. Do you know who wrote it? Do you know that he has a plan for your life? Do you know that the author of the Bible, God himself, personally interested in your success? In your life committed to Him, in your victories. He's, he's given you every tool that you need to be, to be victorious. To overcome your, your situation. To overcome the problems you're going through. So you'll see the right perspective. It's all about perspective in life. What do you notice? When you allow Word of God to bring light into the situation, then things start making sense. If you haven't committed your life to Jesus, or maybe you've committed your life to Jesus, but your walk is just stalled. Maybe you want to renew your relationship with Jesus right in the beginning of 2018. It's not too late. Today is the great opportunity. As we pray today, say, God, I want the Word of God to be alive in me, but I don't feel like I know you enough. I don't feel like I, I'm committed to you enough. Today, I want to commit my life. Make that decision today. Don't delay. Don't wait for another Sunday. Open up your life and allow the Word of God to bring life, restoration, and just purpose. And today, of course, small groups starting. I'm so excited. Another opportunity to talk about God, about what He's doing in your life. So as we pray today, I want everyone to speak to the author of the Bible. And say, God, I accept the Word of God. I thank you for the Word of God. And then we want you to make decisions because we're here to help you. We're here to help you because every one of us here at one day made that decision. And we, we're followers of Christ. It's not always easy, but always worth it to make that decision and follow Him. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we honor you. This morning, Lord, we're so honored to know you. And to when we read the scripture, we're, we're like hearing from you. We're not strangers to you, Lord. That's why reading your, your, your word brings comfort, brings joy brings inspiration Lord and I know that you are personally interested in every one of us Lord that's what makes it so personal father I pray that you speak to us Lord personally everyone can hear from you personally Lord and everyone can see your word of God as personal love letter from you where you tell us Will you direct us? And then you lift us up when we need it. Lord, we just bless your name, Lord. And today, those people who are still kind of not decided, Lord, I pray that the word of God will bring comfort and trust in them so will they'll, they'll make decision to follow you or to rededicate, renew their relationship with you. Lord, and I pray that 2018 would be a year when we elevate the word, word of God, when we go back and, and check our decision, check our priorities and say, God, I want to be in line with your word because that's your best for me. And I I believe and I receive in the name of Jesus. Father, we just bless one another. We just want to take this here by faith, trust in you, and relying on the Word of God and on direction in the Word of God. We honor you. We worship you in the name of Jesus. Amen.